It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today I'm going to be trying to build the Ergo Travel. I've actually had this kit for a really long time now and if I actually look at my emails I've had it since um, June so it's been a good almost four months uh, and it's just because life is busy and it's often very difficult and challenging to actually have time to sit down and do a build especially a complex build like this but today I'm at home my daughter is sick uh, she's resting at the moment and so uh, I'm gonna have a crack at building this now I'm not gonna do it in a in a live sense because I don't know what kind of interruption is gonna come along but also uh, I'm gonna do it as a time-lapse because it could take me a while while I read instructions that uh, JP Constantino who actually sent me this kit uh, has sent me via email because there's certain bits in it like um, using the two I2C resistors as well as things about sockets and plates and standoffs and things like that so I didn't want to end up dragging it out a lot longer than necessary so you will see a time lapse of you know me as I build it and as we go along so I just want to go over the kit again because it has been a while since we saw it so here we go. So there's the tabletop. I got a bunch of uh, standoffs and the kit was nicely wrapped. So in the actual kit, what has been sent to me is a couple of more loose standoffs. We've got the uh, the two TRRS jacks in there, as well as some reset switches for each of the two halves, I believe. Yeah, they're reset switches. A little packet, which I think must have held the standoffs before they escaped. It's just, uh, there's some pull-up resistors, some sockets for the Pro Micros. Now, what I've been led to believe is that using these sockets to, to actually socket the Pro Micro means you will need 14 millimeter standoffs, whereas these, I think, are only 12 mil standoffs, so they probably won't work. But, uh, I, I have not yet decided if I'm going to use these sockets or not, since, yeah, it's, it's just going to be probably me using this, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Of course, all the diodes that are required. Let's unwrap this fully. So this is actually a beta kit. The final kit, I think, is going to be slightly different, or, well... The group buy would have finished already by now anyway but uh so that's one hand this is the the 1.02 as you can see that's written there but uh i believe there is already a 1.03 as part of what was being done and it would have some extra details on the pcb to help with the build so that you're not going to stuff it up now i do apologize in advance <laughs> To, uh, to JP for if I do stuff up while I build it and I do talk about it at the end because obviously any errors that I make are a hundred percent purely my fault and my fault alone obviously not uh, his fault simply because I can't follow or read instructions now wow this is this is really well packaged shall I say incredibly well packaged that in my slight fuzzy state, I'm trying to simulate how do I actually pull these layers apart. Is it just because they're stuck together very well under plastic tension? There we go. Okay, so there's the two halves, and then crazy amount of, uh, of plastic wrap to protect all the layers. Extremely well packaged. So there you go. There's there's a whole whole string of, of plastic wrap now <clears throat> because I've got plates for these I can use plate mount keys uh, and I could have used box switches on them but I've actually got some Gatoron blues here uh, a whole pile of mixed blues some are plate mount some are PCB mount but I just figured you know I might as well use these because these are probably some of the oldest ones I've got I'll have to count them to make sure I've actually got enough but uh, that's what I'm intending to build with these so I've got some plates, I've got the case bottoms, I've got the PCBs, and <clears throat> it'll be basically orientated 
like that. So you've got thumb clusters. It is a ergolumna, so in the sense that the columns are vertical, but the rows are actually slightly curved. So it kind of matches the curvature of your fingers with a small or a single thumb cluster kind of action happening there. So, radio. Um, wish me luck and well very shortly we'll be moving right on into the time lapse of this build All right, and we are back. So hopefully you would have just seen the time lapse or you've skipped through it, it doesn't really matter. It's just me putting together a keyboard, which you can see here. Here is the Ergo Travel in its complete glory. Now, as I've said, I've installed it with Gatoron Blues. So you can maybe hear the light clicking. Uh, my microphone's quite a distance away, but it might pick it up. I've put in stabilizers. Now, I actually bought these stabilizers secondhand and they'd already been clipped. So that's why you probably didn't see me actually clipping them. I do realize a lot of that video, it was actually off screen because it's a lot easier to work it up here rather than sort of me hanging over the top of it as well as the lighting isn't great in this room. Uh, it's something that's probably gonna persist for a long time with poor lighting. But some of the comments that I wanna make about trying this version 1.02 kit is that I wasn't a hundred percent sure based on the actual instructions from the GitHub on the build instructions about where my diodes were meant to go. Cause the version on the GitHub build instructions that I found was actually for the earlier version of the PCB where there was actually a diode underneath the Pro Micro. And in this version of the PCB that doesn't exist. So I ended up just putting in all the diodes because in theory it shouldn't matter if I put in the extra diodes, if the matrix has been developed correctly. So that's what I've done, which is why I ended up having to pull out the other four that I hadn't done on the diode bender originally and put them in. Now, what I haven't done also is I didn't use the hot swap sockets that came with the kit. I don't like using diode legs because I personally find them a little bit flimsy and I've chosen to use the headers and you would have seen that I actually have to clip the headers to make them fit under the 12 mil, which is not a problem. Like if it's soldered in and I'm confident that my Pro Micro is not faulty, it's not an issue. But I do have a good solder sucker and I do have some homemade braiding wick. So if I do want to desolder these, it's not like I can't do that anyway. The other thing that I haven't done is I haven't put in the resistors because the instructions said that they were optional only if I wanted to use 
the I2C. Now, I don't fully understand the I2C 100%, but from what I understand of it, it allows me to daisy chain more USB devices, which I'm not doing here, so I didn't feel it was necessary. If I do discover later on that this isn't working because I'm missing those resistors, I can always just take the bottom of this off and I can solder those resistors in no issues whatsoever. The total build time, including a little bit of gap in between while I was dealing with other things, putting on you know the case, putting on the feet and everything else and cleaning up was two and a half hours. So I don't know how long I'm gonna compress the, the time lapse into, but it was two and a half from start to finish. And um, I think that's actually quite reasonable for a build like this and I was going at a pretty casual pace. So yeah, I wouldn't say this is a very complex build and the end result looks great uh, without keycaps. Of course, I will probably try and dig through my grab bag collection at some point in time and put them on. And you might say, well, I haven't flashed them yet. I haven't tested my Pro Micros yet. Yes, that's correct. That's true. That kind of stuff typically for me takes a little bit longer to get my head around, especially for split keyboards. And the beauty about what they've done here, what uh, JP Constantino has done is the reset switch is very easily accessible. So it's right there. And I can just get in there with any object that's long and firm enough, like a, a bamboo skew or whatever. I can put it there, screwdriver, and just press and it will reset, which will allow me to flash. So I have absolute confidence that that will not be an issue to manage later on. So there you have it. There is the Ergo Travel. It's quite a neat, compact size. Uh, you can sort of see that, you know, if I put my fingers right there, I'm gonna to have to, or I can put my fingers in the middle, which is I think fairly typical. Uh, it just means all my modifiers will actually be one use rather than the, the non one use sizes on a standard layout. I've gone with the single thumb cluster rather than the two, because that's just a personal preference more than anything else. And uh, yeah, there's additional keys as well that would, I guess, well, that'll be, uh, what's that? Z, X, C, V. Am I going to be missing unless if I'm operating up here, which uh, I think you can do that because that'll be WASD and then there's no num row and then you'll have your bottom row. So that'll be Z, X, C, V, B. And then that'll be N, M, bracket, bracket, um, question mark and shift here. Yeah, so so you there's no num row on that. I think by that kind of default layout, you're going to be operating one up. And that's actually really comfortable for, for that thumb row. And then you've got extra modifiers, you know, control, win, alt, and then two, if you want to be shifting layers and things like that, because I would put spacebar there as well. So pretty nifty, relatively easy to build once you just got your head around the, the order of operations. And it's fairly standard. I won't say that it was terribly complex or anything unusual. It's just getting that point of, are you going to be using the two IC and if you're going to do RGB. Now, because I don't have RGB, I didn't use any of those headers that were required for powering the actual LED strips as well. So thank you very much to JP Constantino for sending this kit. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'll probably try and bring this to a meetup because I know that the Ergo Travel probably didn't get a lot of interest here in Australia. Maybe some people have it, maybe some don't, but the next Sydney meetup in December will definitely have this hanging around there, hopefully, if I can cram it into a container to bring along. So thank you for persevering through the video. Uh, and yeah, really appreciate it. If you guys don't know, I do a podcast with uh, my co-host, The Sir Cheddar on Reddit, Kevin. You can find us at www.theboardpodcast.com or you can see all of our post links on Reddit as well as on our Facebook. We now have an Instagram. And naturally, if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, we would really love and appreciate it if you hit that like button that share button, and of course, that subscribe button. So, as I like to finish, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.